All right, guys. Got some good stuff going on. Got my FBD exhaust. I'm not gonna mic up, so hopefully that my new um, uh, stereo video mic X will, will, will solve the serve the purpose here today. I just don't want to mic it and I'll call it up when I'm climbing around uh, putting the exhaust on. So we have uh, FBD Frombacher um, side mufflers, valve delete, and then center muffler bypass. So you know, here's my my thought process on this. You know, I've been I'm not unhappy with the way the GT3 sounds great, but I just think it can sound better. And um, what traditionally what everybody with has been doing is get yourself a center muffler uh, bypass, uh, and then if you want, you could disconnect the valves. But my big problem with the car is that with you know from the factory, the valves are are, are open at idle. And then they close when you take off or when you drive away at you know at moderate speed. And then when you when you shift or then when the engine gets say, somewhere depending on what the load is around 3,700 RPMs or so, the valves reopen. It sounds great when the valves are open. And then when you shift gears, they close again. Unless of course you're up you know beaten on the car. But when you're driving around town, there's always opening and closing effect. It just annoys me. So of course what I did is I disconnected the valves, uh, I went to Titan, we did some case studies, or I did a case study of um, running it with the button on and off, and then valves connected, disconnected, and it was conclusive that uh, I did it under part throttle, under full throttle, so I did you know, a bunch of different, tried to replicate a bunch of different real world scenarios, I know a dyno isn't a real world scenario, but you know, the baseline and then the, the comparison should, should at least give you an idea of whether you're losing power or not. And just as I suspected, when I had forced the valves open, there was a nice smooth linear um, um, horsepower curve and then the torque curve, same thing, was, was, was smoother, whereas when the valves were closed, you would see sort of a dipping of the, of the power and torque curve. So uh, it was clear to me that the valves really are there for, for sound purposes, not for back pressure and horse maximizing horsepower under load. Because again, I didn't run them all wide open throttle, I ran some at, at, you know, at part throttle. Of course, you know, we're trying to replicate exactly what part throttle looks like, but you could see that you know, the, the, the curve with the valves open was like this, and then the, with the valves closed was, was clearly, there were clear dips in, 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 the, in, in the power and torque. So, um, you know, I, I just decided that I wasn't, I wasn't going to settle for just the center bypass, the center muffler delete. So, you know, the way the GT3 exhaust works is you have the headers, I'm going to show you this in the video, but you have the headers, comes down to the cap, the cap then connects to side mufflers, and then the side mufflers has two possible exits. One is a straight pass or straight through, uh, the other is where it actually uses the baffles and the muffler and, and, and comes uh, you know, through, the, through the secondary inlet because the, the, the centered muffler has, has two inlets. So naturally deleting one of the mufflers is going to make it a little louder, about 25% louder, uh, but it doesn't do anything to, to the, the sort of the note for the car. The car still sounds the same in my opinion. And there's a little difference between the GMG and the Sharpworks and, and the FED and some of the other uh, bypasses that are available, but they all sound pretty much the same. So I decided I wanted, I wanted an exhaust that would um, delete or Actually, what I really wanted was I wanted to be able to, just like the Carrera S, be able to open and close the valves by pushing the button. But that's going to require software. I sort of came to the conclusion that you're going to have to tune the, the car, and I don't want to do that. You know, especially with the engine problems, you know, I just don't want to give Porsche an excuse that there's a problem with the car. Uh, the cars appear to be bulletproof, but who knows? I mean, the most mileage anybody has on one is maybe 10, 15,000 miles. So um, we don't really know, you know, how this, this 9 8 it's going to perform long term, whereas the the the, the Mesger engine has been long, around a lot longer. So I uh, wanted an exhaust that, since I couldn't have the valves operating with the button in the car, I decided to concede the button. And there are several options you could do. IPE. There's supposedly this magical car graphic exhaust that nobody seems to have or knows anything about. So. A car graphic was one of the routes I was heading down, uh, and uh, and then someone had mentioned uh, um, 
uh, FPD. And I, I knew of FPD, I just didn't, I didn't know the history, I didn't know the connection uh, with M&M &M and Germany and, and, and the cup cars and, and the you know, Porsche Motorsports and stuff like that. So I decided what I, what, what I wanted to try um, because there's a, BRB has an option where leave the center third muffler and just delete the, the side mufflers and valves and just have a, you know, a straight connection which you know, seems like a viable option as well. But I really wanted to change the note of the car. Um, so I'm hoping this is the solution. Uh, we'll see in about a couple hours here. Um, but I decided what I wanted to do was uh, just keep my shark work center section, have FBD side mufflers. Uh, I, I don't want to mess with the cats and headers because from what I've read, and I could be completely mistaken, but from what I've read, when you mess with cats, you do high flow cats, eventually you're gonna have a check engine light come on. Uh, and I just don't, you, you gain virtually nothing out of, out of a, a different header setup. So, and again, I don't really wanna mess with software right this minute, uh, maybe later on when I'm sure the car is, you know, is, is bulletproof and is, and is not gonna cause a you know, major warranty issue. Uh, I might do like E-bombs e or something like that. software and we can maybe tune the, uh, the valves but for now I wanted just a basic regular exhaust that just sounds good all the time I don't want it to drone I don't want it to be earth-shatteringly loud but I want it to be just make the make the 91 sound as good as it possibly can so long story short I made a post uh, on Renlist about my crusade of I'm gonna try to try to figure out an exhaust I'm willing to spend maybe you know, to spend lots of money but a little bit of money I'm willing to spend to try to figure this out. I plan on having this car for a, a while. You know, bare minimum I've got to have it for five years because of my, uh, my signed in blood contract with a wife. No new cars for five years now so um, it's the good news is I'm stuck with the, the two cars that I want for a while. So um, you know I really want to invest the, the effort into making this car as good as, as it can be and, and it's not as good as it can be factory just mainly because not that Porsche doesn't know what they're doing it's that, that, that there's restrictions and they have to find happy mediums and you know for instance there's no cage in the car but the GMG uh, roll uh, harness bar and it actually I can I can feel a difference in the rigidity of the rear end so hence this this crusade uh, someone had suggested call FED I got on the phone called FED talked to Rhonda and she then sort of told me the history of of Porsche Motorsports and FED Brombacher and their relationship with m and and she said I can absolutely make what you want. Now she was so flippant so quick to say yes we can make what you want I was a little nervous and that um, you know I, I sort of explained briefly what I wanted but but and if any of you guys have gotten to know me from watching these videos I'm a little bit I'm wound a little tightly so I don't tend to take people's word for it when I probably should um, but I told her no drone I don't want to lose power, and I want it to sound deeper, you know, better, uh, less. I'm not a big rasp guy. I don't like that sort of raspy you know, sound. That's probably why I don't like the way that the, the F80 M3 sounds very much at, at higher RPMs. So I wanted it to just again, let's make this thing sound as good as we possibly can. So my idea was delete the valves. Do they had a side muffler option, but I don't think anybody really actually put it on their car yet. Um, so make side, make new mufflers, new tuned mufflers, uh, and then use the Sharkworks Center Bypass or GMG or whatever you have. Uh, and she had suggested what, uh, what, what we do is talk to, um, talk to, because I thought they would have had two outlets from the mufflers, but again, that doesn't make sense now, now that I think about it. So she said, well, let me talk with Eminem and we'll, we'll get back to you and Mr. Brombacher and we'll, we'll talk about how, you know, what, what, what makes sense based on what you're asking for. I think it, she said, I think I know what you want. She said, I do know what you want. I said, okay, great. So came up with a solution, new side mufflers, single exit from the side muffler. So here's the inlet, here's the exit, and the uh, valve deletion, and then just use it with your Sharkworks bypass and cap the extra, the extra inlets. Because again, there are two outlets. One is a straight pass through the, the mufflers, and the other is sort of a baffled, longer route, which is what, what when the valves are closed, that's where the vast majority of that's where all the exhaust gases are going through. When the valves open, it just opens up that more direct pathway. So some exhaust gas is still going all the way through the long way, 
um, but then, then, then there is a direct pass through, hence you hear a, you know, a significant difference in, in amplification, allowing more exhaust gas to flow through. So the thought was the two little sections, the two little extra inlets on the shark works, we could just put some caps on those, that way you didn't have to buy a new center section. Then I got to thinking, well, I'd really like to have a specific center section. And this isn't anything fancy, so guys, don't, don't expect this. You know, this is the polar opposite of IPA, IPE. This is real, I believe, quality engineering. Um, this is handmade. You can see that some dude just got out of, you know, got out of, uh, you know, some metal and started banging on it and, and put this thing together. Um, these guys build cup car exhaust, so um, don't expect this to look like, you know, some stainless work of art, like, or like a titanium work of art, like, a, like an Acker exhaust. Don't expect that. I mean, you can see the, there's little, you know, little bends in the, in the welds, but you know, that's not going to matter. All this has to do is hold the tips on. So I have them make me a direct center section, so that way I don't have the little, the shark works and, and the bypasses, and even the, the factory third muffler has a little offshooting little extra pipe uh, to, to, for, the, for the, 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 the factory muffler. So since I don't have that, I figured why not just get rid of it. So this piece here is, and what are they charging, 12 bucks or something like that for it. So, you know, it's a little less expensive than the bypasses that are out on the market. And I think that if it were me and I wanted a complete look, if this works in the next couple hours, we're going to find out if everybody's flooding the market with their sharper cloth pass, uh, whether this sounds good or not. Um, but if, if this does work, I would guess that most of you guys that have spent $160,000 in your car are not going to have a problem spending an extra thousand bucks to get it done right. But they are going to offer an option, FED is going to offer an option of um, this 70 millimeter exit. Um, I have to measure the shark works for everybody here, but I'm going to measure it for, for, for M&M and, and, and make sure that, um, that this will indeed fit on the, on the shark works, you know, the shark works connection. Uh, and it, I, I'm guessing it, it will. So um, I'm going to do this whole, so this is what we would call a cat back section because headers, cats, then side mufflers, then center delete or center bypass. So um, we're not going to mess with the cats. This is going to connect right here, right up to the, to the, catal to the catalytic converter, so no check engine lights. I mean, the O2 sensors are, are before this. So all this theoretically should do is hopefully make a little bit of power, and I don't even care about that. Um, I hopefully don't lose a bunch of power and, and want it to sound better. So that's the story. That's the thought process. That's why I did this. Um, and see if it works. So I'm going to take you through this process of, um, of install and try to capture as much as I can. I don't have a lift. I wish I did. If I had a lift then I could show you everything real real easily but I'm going to try to get the camera on there and just sort of talk you through this. But um, install should be pretty easy. I may have to take the wheels off, the rear wheels off, but I doubt it. We'll see. The bumper, you don't have to take the bumper off. I know that for a fact. Um, so I'm going to start working through this and, and talk you through it and we'll, we'll, we'll work on it together and then hopefully see, see that it sounds great. Alright guys, I changed my mind. I put the other mic on. I needed to turn the fans on to get some air moving in here because it's like a freaking thousand degrees. That and the other, the other mic is just too echoey. So I guess I'll just make do with this. <clears throat> Got my new little jack pads. Let's see how these work. Oh, nice. Fits in a specific way. Keeps the jack off the frame of the car. <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jack this up. Turn this. Try not to hit the M3. I'm gonna put the uh, Rhino ramp underneath. That way, just, I just feel more stable. Wow, these tires are so soft. You can actually see where the car sits on the uh, flooring. Looks like a potato chip. Cool.
By the way, these are El Cheapo Harbor Freight jacks. And notice I'm jacking right on the floor. It won't hurt it. It's rated for 50,000 pounds. Not exactly rocket science. Take my jack pad back off. See, here's the little pad. Got bad news for the for me. It's that love bug season started today. I drove the M3's got freaking love bugs all over the windshield. I hate those things. If you're not from the southeast, you probably don't know what I'm talking about, and, and you're better for it. There are these little bugs that as soon as you breathe on them, they splatter. And they have some really nasty you know, guts that tends to mess up your pain if you don't get it off really quickly. I have, so the wheel's chalked up front, by the way. In case you guys are getting nervous. Okay, so we've got the car up in the air. I'm gonna readjust the camera and see if we can get it under here. See, the beauty of these is the sucker's not going anywhere no matter how hard I mess with it, if that makes sense. All right, so what I'm doing, there are these clamps. Really, 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 really easy to install this stuff or deinstall this stuff. So there are bolts, there are four, clamps they clamp the center section to the valve and to the side muffler to the sort of the valving area so all i need to do is loosen this up so there are two there are two clamps that clamp it to the to the actual chassis of the car And then there are two clamps that clamp the side muffler valves and the center section. So I'm pulling those out or loosening those up. And then I'll need to loosen the side mufflers to sort of push them to the side so that I can get the center section out. And then I don't know how to take the, uh, I haven't taken out the, the side mufflers yet on on a 911, so I think they're pretty easy though. Let's see if I can do this without messing it up. So anyway, that's what I'm working on. Okay, I got the shark works out. Center section's out. And I'm gonna have to take, I think, either take the bumper cover off or the rear wheel off in order to get the, uh, side mufflers out so I'm gonna I'm gonna do that right now I'm gonna take the wheels off and see how that how that works
<sighs> Shoot. Tighten, loosen. I think I had to lock on. Yikes. So that's about 440 pounds. The torque feels like. It's a good thing I'm strong. just tells me that maybe I didn't torque these properly. Thing looks good. My wheel guide on. So I'm gonna jack up the carbon ceramics. Let's see if we can get this muffler out. I if I don't cross thread it. There we go. This is the second time I had the wheels off from opti coating the first time. The tires still look good. These things are incredibly light for what they are. As big as they are. Okay, now we need to remove all this stuff. And this. Shoot, I wish I had bought some darn filters. I would have just done it all at once. Well, now that I know how easy it is to get the bumper cover off. <clears throat> All right, so let's see. Let me follow the directions. I normally start getting ahead of myself and... Okay, that's done. That's done. Okay, bumper cover's off. Next, I gotta actually take the bumper off. So, the bumper. Looks like a 13 mil. <clears throat> it's 12, 13, bingo. I know you guys are freaking out, but I'm just disorganized. I'm out first. Put my tools. I'm normally not this disorganized, but... There's three, three 13 mil bolts here. Take off this aluminum bumper. Actually... Yeah, I'm gonna take this off if I wanna get the heat shielding off. I was gonna say I could just leave this on. Wife and son are doing some sword fighting. By the way, you guys are going to have to get used to this fan noise because it's too, too darn hot here in Florida. They're not have some fans on in the garage. I hope it's not too annoying.
Take the two bottom out, leave the top one in. So we'll loosen the top. As I was saying, I didn't think I was gonna have to take the front the bumper cover off, but now I know you do. But I don't think it's anything to be scared of. I mean, as you guys can see, I'm not like super mechanically inclined. I'm just, I'm just it's not like we're fabricating anything, we're just putting it putting it together. Luckily, I wasn't smart enough to not um, park the darn car in front of the door because I wanted some extra space, thinking this was going to take me an hour or two. Well, now it looks like I'm going to be up all night until I get this done. is tacked on. Oh, I see. I think I need to remove that and put these back in here. <clears throat> Probably follow the directions. See if I can remember how to put this all back together. It's one way to learn a lot about your car. Completely disassemble it. It's also a good way to make it rattle, cause all kinds of problems. Take it apart. <clears throat> Let me consult the instructions again. Oh, okay. Yep, yeah. yep. So now, theoretically, this piece should come out. Yeah. It would have been a lot easier to take the shark works off and the tips off had this piece not been there. <laughs> but I like to do things the hard way. Okay, now I gotta take this side assembly off. find a tutorial somewhere, but this can't be that hard, right? I think this is a 10 mil. Yep.
that would be smart to put all the bolts in one spot. I like to, I like to add a little mystery to my installs. I knew I bought this extension for something. be the last one. Yes. Bingo. Well, that certainly makes it easier to get to. So, Word of the wise, take the thing apart. It's a lot easier. It really wasn't that bad. I already have this side muffler removed. I put the smaller extension back on. It's kind of fun with this giant piece. Okay. And the last one here. There's a side muffler. Bingo. So there we go. I think it's pretty stinking heavy. <clears throat> okay, so you can see the, the diameter difference of the piping. Considerably larger on the, on the FED. Now the factory, the way this thing works, you know, if we wanna do it the same, look, make it look the same. So you can see this section here, exhaust comes out of the cat, out of the header, in through the cat, and then direct, and it has a direct pass. So when the valves are open, the exhaust can flow straight through. Now some exhaust is still going through the muffler system, but you have a sort of a straight through section, so that's what the valves do. But then you have this tiny little upper section, uh, which is where the exhaust cast is passed through the, whatever, the muffler system, and then have them get sort of push out here. So. You, I mean, you're, you're guaranteed to lose power. And I mean, when I tested it, that was the case. We lost power by having the valves closed versus a straight exit. And of course the argument is, well, you need that back pressure at low RPMs. Well, I, that's why I went and tested it and it showed that wasn't the case. And you can see here, let me show you. So you can see how it looks in the car. So here's the, when the valves are closed, the exhaust gas is passed through the top pipe and then you know, the center bypass would, would, would allow it to skip the third muffler because the third muffler goes here. But you know, here's the cat, 
there's a direct straight through uh, the gases, exhaust gases go straight through, but I'm sure this is still taking away some of the resonant frequencies. So I'm gonna be really, really interested to see how this FVD does. I think it's gonna be perfect. All right, so I'm gonna take, I have to take the bolts off. First, I have to take this assembly off of here. <clears throat> Take like another 13 mil, whatever I did with that. Thirteen mil. I did something with the 13 mil socket. That's 12. Shoot. 13. Watch, it's probably not 13. You're gonna need to remove this piece. And the factory muffler. Replace it here on the new one, on the FED. So it's gonna go like this. So uh-oh, I have to stretch this out. Let's see. It's gonna take a little uh, convincing here. One nice thing about this floor is I don't have to worry about scratching anything sliding around on it. <clears throat> there we go. Little little adjustment. Never hurt anybody. Get some channel locks. Shoot. Sorry. Big old channel locks to get so many freaking drawers, I don't know where the heck anything is. So, anyway, I had to take this piece off of here and then replace it onto this. I just need to get the nut on. Okay, there's that. We'll set it in position and then we'll torque it down. Actually, you know what? I don't think you can. I think this thing moves no matter what, yeah. Because there's not enough room behind the header or behind on top of the cap to tighten this. I'm sure there's a specific spec here. We're gonna call this the Matt Mormon guest spec. There we go. That ought to do it. It's not coming off. Okay. So I'm gonna move the camera over here. Let me get Again, it. you can see the size difference, especially of the exit piping. 
So another test. This piping diameter is going to be different. So this would, this specific, if you order it the way I ordered it, it's not. I mean the Shark Works would fit, but it's not designed to work that way. You don't have any slits, so it's you know the the slits in the Shark Works expansion joint. So uh, FED made it clear that they would the version would be a little bit different. I have the very specific center section designed for the FED. Okay, so let's move this over here. Okay, so let me do a little ISO, brighten it up a little bit for you. It might get washed out, but at least you'll be able to see what the heck we're doing. So here is the exhaust. So here's the header assembly, so it's three, obviously with a six cylinder flat six. You got the three exits. Come here, O2 sensor, O2 sensor. So O2 sensor before the cat, O2 sensor after the cat. You really, from, from what I've read, you really don't get much out of changing this. Um, you know, Evoms did it. This here is the capped off um, line for the valves i'll just leave that alone I'll just leave that there so the fed the, the bracket is going to go connect right here so the i'll show you here in a second but um the mufflers are considerably smaller a little further away from the rear tire too which i think is going to be not such a bad thing i'll weigh the factory ones and i have the weights on these so you'll be able to see that as well <clears throat> moment of truth Hope it fits. It's good to me. All right, so let me get these bolts. the heck I did with them. Let's see if that'll sit there. Okay, let me get these. Here they are. <clears throat> these are 13 mil. Let me just get this secured. So there's a bracket here. Put these nuts on. I'm not going to tighten anything down so I can line it all up, or at least attempt to line it up. I can already tell this is going to be freaking awesome. It's going to be way awesome, I can tell. All right. There's the side muffler section. Let me make sure you can see that all right. Yeah, you guys can see. I purposely told them I don't really care about having some stainless. You can't see this anyway. So this is T316 instead of T304, which they're you know, firm believers in. If m and is a believer in it, I'm a believer in it. So let me put the clamp clamp assembly back on. <clears throat> so this will pull everything tight. I hope if I put it on correctly. Be careful because this thing will break. You don't want to bend it too many times. I'm sure it's a hundred bucks to get a new one. Let's 
see here. Let's see which way is smarter. Yeah, it definitely goes this way. Uh, I guess the bolt was on the outside. Yeah, it was. And this should pull everything tight, theoretically. Let me at least get this started. channel locks Work out okay. <clears throat> Theoretically. To get some vice grips out. So when you take this off, it gets a little whopper jawed. Got to kind of bend it back into place. Frickin' screw. There we go. He's got it started. Move it back to where it belongs. That's all the way around. I'm not gonna torque that down as long as it grabbed. It did. Ugh. This is much better. Working. Ah, excuse me. I'm working with the bumper off. Okay, so there, there's that part. I'm gonna take this bumper off, or not bumper. By the way, if you can see in there, the valve is open, as I forced it open. Does that mess up my tips? Okay, so there's two 13 millimeter bolts that hold this side muffler on and that's it. it comes right out They're right here on this little you'll see them when you look up in here 
<clears throat> Real easy to break loose. Yeah, you definitely don't need to take the, uh, the rear wheel off. Live and learn. I guess let me do the learning, you do the living. I actually enjoy doing this to, well, to some extent. The payoff is when I fire this thing up. You know I'm not gonna be able to wait until I put the bumper back on. I'm firing this sucker up in the next 30 minutes. I'll at least put the wheel back on first. Get it down on all fours. Okay. All right, this is ready to come out. <clears throat> so, you can see the, sort of the construction, the difference. Sort of how the muffler looks. See here. I mean, look at the difference in sizing. This is gonna be either really loud or really deep. Probably both. I'm excited. I think it's gonna be perfect. All right, so let me pull this out. Show you how easy this is. Boom, out. So you can see that this section here goes into this little clamp. So let me remove this again. Place it. I'm telling you, if I did this again, it would take me like an hour. Maybe two. You'd be a little smarter than that, Matt. Just a little bit smarter than that. A lot smarter than that. Okay, pull the pin out. See you later, side exhaust. See you later, valves. I freaking hate valves. Okay, get this puppy back on here. Goes like this. <clears throat> the pin in. that get stuck in there. Channel locks out again. See this exhaust was sliding around on, this muffler was sliding around on concrete and be a problem. Just got a little bit of the threads bleeding through there. Okay, let's torque this puppy down. See, because this sits right on top of the, this sits right on top of the cat, so you gotta tighten it now. But the way that this is designed, it's so that they can swivel. It's like 50 years of Porsche engineering right there at its, at its finest. That looks pretty good. Can I still move it? Yep. All right. 
So I'm not doing a very good job of capturing this for you guys. Get a little more ISO. Let's see what I'm doing. Okay. Put this side on. Right here. probably in your way, I'm sorry. Get a good view of the back of my head. I'm hoping, I'm thinking this is going to become sort of the new exhaust standard, but we'll see. I guess. I'm about to find out. When I say standard, I mean for the 991. remember how these went on, but I do know that the bolt faces down so you can screw it on the Allen, the hex bolt. I didn't mangle this one as much, so. Okay. That'll hold that in place. Now I can dial in the center section. Back it up a little bit here so you can see what it's doing. Turn this annoying light off. All right, so we got the side sections on. Sorry, I'm getting really excited. It's gonna be freaking awesome. We're about 20 minutes away from firing this thing up. Well, theoretically, 20 minutes away. So my 20 minutes is usually 40 minutes. So there's muffler one, muffler two. Now I'm about to put the center section in. Let me move to the side so you can see. Uh, let me make sure I do this right. Yeah, it goes like this. All right? Yeah. So first, loosen these. Got to take these off. Completely off because they'll wrap around this exhaust brace here. See, aren't I a darn smart guy? I don't even have directions. I'm just figuring this out as I go along. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay, so that's gonna go around the bottom, I'm assuming. Luckily, I've already done this part with the shark works, and those exhaust, those side mufflers are so darn easy. Once you remove the move the rear bumper, I just thought that taking the bumper off was going to be a lot harder than it was. I don't know why. Now, granted, I haven't put it back on yet, but it's super easy. Okay, so now this goes here, 
theoretically. I need to bend that out a little bit. We'll bend back in after we clamp it down. I mean, this is the prototype, so. It's probably already been clamped. At least I hope it was, because that means it was tested. to widen it enough so that I can get the center set or the, the pipe inside of this one. Oh, if this was fancy stainless, you wouldn't be able to do that. But since it's man exhaust, there's one. I'm going to loosen this. Always makes me nervous doing aftermarket stuff. It never quite works right. Always requires a little bit of convincing. <clears throat> I might need to take this back off. Let it defeat me. <laughs> Little bit smarter, Maddie. <clears throat> now they made a mark. one of these somewhere. Take this back off. I got where that mark is. There it is. That's how I'll know how far in to put this. See if I can see my mark.
My problem is I'm gonna have to put the uh, rear bumper on before I can tighten all this down. Because I wanna center this up on the bumper. Pretty freaking sick though. That's how we know it's straight. Picking the frickin' hammers. Got so many drawers. Gonna take a little bit of adjusting. I think that's our spot. You can see it's sitting a little crooked. I would guess that this is centered, so it's pretty good. to go that way. This 
just needs to be loosened up a little bit. <clears throat> Not advisable. Okay, got it lined up, at least I think I do, to some extent. Looks relatively lined up. I just sort of laid the bumper on here, just so I had a, an idea. I'll take the bumper back off. Shoot. Okay, I'm gonna start tightening all this stuff down a little bit. See how it goes. It looks pretty good. Nothing's touching. You know, lining up exhaust is not an exact science. It's just a flat out guess. I'm going to fire it up before I put everything back together. Just to make sure there's nothing leaking or mainly just so I can hear it. I'll be sure to hook the mic up so you guys can hear it too. I'm going to put the wheel back on first. I'll tighten down and then we'll sort of figure out what's what. Let's see how it looks. I'm sure, I'm gonna have to loosen and retighten a couple times. Yeah, I certainly wouldn't want to be trying to do this. with um, bumper on. <laughs> so, I don't know what I was thinking there. Okay, that's good. Get this tightened down. So that pulls it on nicely. Make sure you point the bolt bolts downward. That way, if you do need to do any work when it's installed, you can get at them. Get the freaking extension. You guys are excited as I am. It's gonna be freaking awesome, I hope. So 
put these suckers down. Turn this a little bit. So even though I mangled that up a little bit, it's not gonna matter. <clears throat> Torque to spec, my spec, whatever that is. We call it a flat out guess. See, I don't know if this is centered or not. It doesn't look centered. But when I, when I test fit the bumper, I think this plate is a little off center. At least I hope so. Maybe I'm just a little off center. Go, put these puppies down. These are the straps that hold the center section in place. Yep, nothing touching. I don't intend on tightening these knees down too much. Just a little. I don't want anything vibrating. That sucker's not going anywhere. Let me tighten the tips down. These are 13s. Yep. Mm. That's pretty good. Washers. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put the bumper on. I'll probably have to readjust this a little bit. <clears throat> oh, shoot. I guess I don't need to go in that way since I got the top. These two bolts up here. Yeah. Sorry, I'm not very talkative today. I'm on a mission. A mission to make awesome sound my GT3. <clears throat> Either awesome sound or really crappy sound. Or I guess it could be somewhere in between, but let's just hope it's awesome. For the good of this world. I hope if I put the wrong end on here. Ugh. 
Okay, that's tight. Last two. This darn microphone is getting all tangled up on me. At least it's, at least it's tight. All right, put the wheel back on. And we'll fire it up and ditch this thing. All right, last step, before we fire it up, I don't have the mic on, but ready to hear a fire up, shall we? All right, guys, moment of truth. Let's see what it sounds like. It's a long time coming. Then I gotta put all the rest of the stuff back together. The wheel tires back on. Wheel back on.
that.